What's going on fellas? It's fall and I'm doing a fall outage on the old wood burner reclaimer here. I wanted to see how much buildup was inside of the reclaimer after three to four years of use. I'll have to check that exact date, but it's at least three years. And the buildup isn't all that bad. Look at that spiral pattern on there. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna clean all this gunk off of here and we're gonna be putting a vortex catcher inside of here because sometimes bark and stuff flies through that discharge or that intake down into that bottom port. The buildup isn't all that bad at all for the amount of time. Probably because this thing maintains a five to 700 degree temperature would be the most pressing reason I would guess anyway. But uh, I'm cleaning all this dirt out of here, getting everything ready to roll and uh, we'll be there. This is the Ventura we're gonna fire up. And uh, this ought to be pretty awesome. This thing is gonna pump the smoke. And it is far more effective than this one was. Okay, so I got lucky and was able to just go right into the threads of the old elbow. I think I'm gonna cut it down to about right here. I don't wanna go too high up. And if it does something weird as far as some localized heating or some type of inefficiency, I'll go ahead and take it back apart and cut this down lower. But I think we're going to go with this lowest line right here. That way, if any debris flies in the tangent, it will uh, most likely just end up in the bottom there. Well, there it is. Hopefully, I'm not too restrictive. Looks like it's down in there deep enough. All right, we're capped up. Getting ready to throw some charcoal kindling in here. We're gonna fire this thing up. All right, fellas, we're gonna take a little quick look at this situation with the Fleur One thermal camera and see if this thing is heating up evenly enough that I don't have to chop it back open. If we see like a real cold bottom, or if the bottom of this reclaimer is not hotter than that discharge pipe that's going across the ground there, that will probably call for me to cut this thing open. So let's hope that doesn't happen. As long as that reclaimer stays hotter than that pipe on the ground, I think I'm gonna call that uh, good enough. I've speeded this film up um, times four. I don't know what that means with this software. I've recently purchased the new editing software. So you'll be seeing some better things these days, hopefully. But uh, so far, so good. The entire reclaimer is getting pretty hot. I was hoping I didn't see a real hot spot at the top and then something real cold at the bottom. So far, the bottom is basically the same temperature as the discharge. But, uh, We're not done yet. It may just take a second for the swirling gases to heat up that larger portion of metal. I apologize for all the jostling around. I tried to be smooth, but this was at uh, four times as slow. Now the crazy thing that I noticed during this test is that you can see a laser beam on red hot metal with this camera. Do you see that right there? I'm kind of, oh, it's at four times the speed, so we probably won't be able to see it very good. I was shining a laser beam. You can see it right there flicking around. But I'm uh, actually taking a thermal gun to this. Ooh, the top of that's really getting hot now. I should have shut the temperature gauge off. When you see that black color, that usually indicates over 500 degrees when it starts doing that. Look at that laser beam shows up even on red hot metal i guess that isn't red hot though is it <laughs> this camera gives you the impression that my furnace is really that hot we could get her that hot if we put her mind to it the garage would quickly burst into flames though so let's uh, go outside and take a quick look at the Ventura setup, man, look at all that heat from the, on the ground. I should probably slow this portion down. It's kind of hard to see what we're looking at. I think I'll do that. 
All right, sorry about the shouting. It turns out there's no volume button for narration. But I am loving this Ventura. This thing is gonna outlast any of the other configurations I've used. It's got a very strong draft. And I don't have to worry about cleaning it all the time or it getting louder as time passes. That was the big headache with the other system. It just gets so loud, it's annoying. Look at this heat pipe that we got going on here. This totally blazing some heat off of it there. In the winter time, when it's like 20 below outside, it heats the shop up quick. So I'm definitely glad that I went ahead and did that. That's just recycled fence post. There's a little night look at the smoke. It stops smoking after it's been running for a while. It burns the smoke inside the throat of the reclaimer intake. So we just started up. It takes a minute to get heated up, but I want to show you what I mean by burning the smoke. Now look what happens to the flames as they're shooting down that intake. The smoke has a t hard time making it out of there without being burnt in a scenario like that because we're choking and bottlenecking down the exhaust we're kind of forcing it into a scenario where it has to be burnt. So the smoke's probably already dropped off a little bit. So not too much stratification. I think this thing's gonna be just fine. The flutter image showed it was gonna be all right. And it does have a bit of a high power draw, three times what I would normally run on a direct intake system where the discharge gases would go directly into the blower. You could do 100 watts and get what we're seeing here. But uh, it ain't too bad. That's a pretty small little fire. It's only like 40 degrees out, so I don't need a whole lot of heat right now. But I'm, I'm liking it. The current draw is a little high, but it's so silent I can't hear it. And I'm getting, you know, 500,000 BTUs for 300 watts of power. I'll take that any day of the week. That triax what I'm using to control the blower speed. And uh, I think we're heating up just fine. This thing's gonna do all right. Um, don't think I gotta cut it back open. So it's 77 degrees in here already. And uh, I've got it turned down to about 200 watts, which is good. Still got a decent little fire for the temperature I'm dealing with right now. So, not too bad. I'm glad I don't have to keep it running at like 600 watts or something. That's what I was worried about because they're typically not that efficient. Here's a daytime startup, first thing in the morning. So as you can see, that's a pretty good size little fire right there. Startup's always smoky till you get them flames going. 